so thank you very much for that introductory presentation, which kind of really sets the scene for this next presentation, because we've just heard about diet and we've heard about physical activity and how they are important in obesity and may be important in helping people manage avoiding becoming obese. But one of the real questions to ask is how do we translate those dietary recommendations and those physical activity recommendations into behaviours? And this has been a, a real problem in implementation research. So what I will ask is how the state-of-the-art technology can be used to help people maintain their weight loss when I work out how to send my slides forward. And I think everybody in this room would be very happy to say, well, why can't we just prevent obesity at an earlier stage and we don't have to worry about weight loss maintenance? And that is a, is a very nice aspiration, but we are currently in a situation where this is too late. 60% of the Western population is either collectively overweight or obese. And we all know that healthcare costs are unsustainable. And we know that no one approach, no one sector or organization can solve this problem. This is not lost on the general public. It's now emerging that about 40% of the adult population are themselves trying to manage their weight at any one time with very little success. 80% of those people regain that weight. And this is why we just heard that obesity is ever a chronic relapsing condition. Which means that the biggest predictor of weight gain or weight regain is losing weight in the first place. And when you have a chronic relapsing condition, there is no simple point cure. No individual drug is gonna fix this. What you need is prevention management throughout the whole process. And we don't have time to talk about this today, but there are very good reasons why weight loss predicts subsequent weight regain. When people lose weight, they lose fat and they lose fat-free mass. And that kicks off whole cascades of signaling systems. And those signaling systems create a gravitational pull on eating behavior and on physical activity behaviors. And that pull takes people back to where they came from. So the, what happens under the skin, what happens under the surface, is, is a very strong pull that people cannot see. And they find it difficult to understand how their weight regains. And this is a sufficiently big problem that about three years ago, the NIH in the US called together a task force to ask if they could construct a conceptual framework to take account of the physiological challenge of weight loss for behavioral solutions to maintenance. And they produced a very nice framework which gives an account, you can see here on the left, of what happens with eating and appetite behaviors, and here on the right of what happens with metabolism. In other words, the two sides of the energy balance equation. So when people lose weight, their hunger goes up, their appetite drives go up. There are compensations in energy expenditure components which go down. And the problem with that is it makes it progressively harder to maintain a reduction in energy intake or an elevation of energy expenditure. And this is the framework which shows how people's weight creeps back up. In this framework, one of the things they suggested was approaches to help people maintain weight loss. And th those approaches, I think, were fairly limited. They suggested, well, we, we use cognition, we use motivation, and maybe we use pharmacotherapy to help people sustain long-term reductions in energy intake and long-term elevations of energy expenditure. So I think this is an extremely attractive framework, but I think the contents of those green boxes could be elaborated because I think that just focusing on motivation, cognition, and pharmacotherapy is not necessarily gonna help us. Which brings us to this question of can we design 
digital behaviour change interventions to overcome that physiological resistance to weight loss. And I think if I was standing here five years ago, I could not tell you of the developments and the very exciting things that we can now do with digital technologies, which I think will revolutionise our ability in the next few years to help people manage their weight in the long term. But one of the key problems with trying to develop digital solutions is there's already so many of them out there. And it's what we call a broken market. The most popular, like how many people in this room have an app for diet or physical activity? There's one, <laughs> there's another one. The most popular apps and digital solutions to help us manage our energy balance behaviors tend to be the least evidence-based. And, and this slide covers a couple of systematic reviews that you can go and read. And that is a problem, because what people are buying and attracted to are the things that seem to be the least effective. So can we get around that? And if we want to get around that, the first question I think we have to ask is what would be our best bet solutions to translate those dietary recommendations and those physical activity recommendations into behavior change? How do you turn the information into people actually doing that stuff? So again, if you go to the scientific literature, I can summarize it in one slide for you. It looks like this. Self-regulation of eating and physical activity behaviors, including eating a diet which is rich in low energy dense, nutrient dense, foods such as fruit and vegetables. Managing stress, emotions and well-being is the things that derail cognitive attempts to manage weight in the face of this physiological pull that happens under the skin. And managing control and loss of control of eating behaviours. And again, there is a role for foods like fruit and vegetables in there. So I'd like to present to you now a conceptual approach and an actual project, which is European funded, where we've actually said, okay, how can we understand what European consumers are doing? How can we take that understanding and information and translate it into a digital toolkit, which is based on theoretically informed, evidence-based approaches, the best bet science we've got? And then how can we take that toolkit and test it? and see what it does in the longer term and how can we go from where we are now in the field to the future to inform new interventions that will be more effective at a personal level. So all of this we are currently engaged in doing in a project called Know How, which is a Horizon 2020 EC funded project. And we've actually examined consumer needs in representative samples across three European countries, understanding what people do, what they need when they try and lose weight. We've built, we spent two years building a digital toolkit, testing it, trialing it, getting the thing to work. And I don't have time now to tell you all the details of that toolkit, but you can go to the KnowHow website and have a look at it. And we're currently in the process of conducting a randomized control trial. And the idea with this toolkit is to take people from this cycle of weight loss where they initially get into attempts in an environment which is working against them. Those attempts become failing, they lapse, they give up and they end up in a place that, that's worse off than when they started. And what we want to do is take them from that scenario which is so typical of weight loss attempts to a place where we can or well, we can put digital approaches that give individualized feedback, stress management, and lead to more adaptive behavior changes, taking people to better self-management and a better place of well-being. And the way that we would like to do this, and are actually in, in the process of doing it, is through our theoretically informed, evidence-based toolkit. And the if the best evidence relates to self-regulation on the one side and emotion regulation on the other side, then that toolkit 
has two conditions, and so it comes in four versions. And those four versions map onto the forearms of, of a randomized control trial that we're conducting. That toolkit is something that people use and interact with on a weekly basis. It, it measures their physical activity. It measures their weight. It gives them feedback about those factors, and it gives them evidence-based behavior change approaches that either use self-regulatory or emotion-regulatory <coughs> components. And it constantly talks to a data hub. The data hub, meanwhile, feeds back information about their progress to them week by week. And that allows us to build a toolkit which is co-designed with users, which is evidence-based. We can quantify its effects. We will validate it through a, a randomized control trial. It's also personalized. And this word personalization is, I think, extremely important for the future. This is an example of how we manage to personalize a toolkit. We give people individual roadmaps, and we allow them a choice of tools within each arm of the toolkit. This is an example of the tracking technologies that we use, which are commercial grade tracking technologies that many of you are probably wearing this morning. So if we've got this toolkit, pardon me, in four versions, we need four arms of a trial in a two by two factorial design. We're almost at the end of this trial. For each participant, it takes 18 months, six months active intervention, 12 months follow up in 1,600 Europeans in three different countries. And in, in these kind of trials, you have a primary outcome, and of course the primary outcome is weight. But I think something that is much more interesting and important in relation to digital approaches to weight loss maintenance is the fact that we have built a digital architecture that allows us to track behavior changes and the techniques and how they influence the two sides of the energy balance equation to influence subsequent weight and health outcomes. And this architecture is the way I think we will conduct trials in the future, where a whole randomized trial can now be conducted virtually online, where all of the psychological questionnaires, the whole intervention itself, the measurement of physical activity and the measurement of diet are conducted digitally and stream to a central data hub. And we can collect the metadata, i.e. the data about who is using which components of that intervention. Now the benefit of that architecture and that approach is we can go to the NIH model, the framework, and we can populate it. And we can populate it with theoretically informed, evidence-based behavior change approaches in a way that will tell us something we've never understood before. And what it will tell us is what we call the mediators and moderators of the intervention are. That means who do certain components work for and how do they work? What is the mechanism by which they work? And answering those two questions, who and how, will allow us to personalize solutions for the future. So I think the future of these kind of interventions involves digital architectures like this that allow us to simultaneously measure how our interventions and their components are actually used by participants, how they exert psychological impacts and effects, how those psychological effects influence energy balance behaviors and the health and weight of people in the general population. So the, the final slide really just gives you a conclusion which is, is, I hope, a door to the future where we can overcome what seems to be an intractable problem, that weight loss almost inevitably leads to weight regain because of the physiological currents that are consequent on that weight loss. And to develop weight loss maintenance interventions, we need to be able to facilitate the adjustment of individual energy balance behaviors to help people navigate around those physiological changes. And digital technologies will help us do that through personalization and navigation of energy balance behaviors using evidence-based behavior change approaches. That, together with digital technologies, might help us develop 
a behavioural energy balance approach where we can develop personalised solutions to long-term weight management through advanced tracking technologies and markers of behaviour change. And I think that is where we will go in the next generation of personalised health behaviour change, which will enable the kind of dietary and physical activity recommendations that we've spoken about for many decades to be implemented at the individual level. Thank you.